Tonight's episode of the Sunday Night Talk is here. It's ready. It's week 13. We just mercifully wrapped up San Francisco Buffalo. Omar is here, although I think he's here to talk about his Sunday in this game. So get ready, buckle up. I don't know what his mood is going to be. Before we get to the show, though, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I put a new YouTube short up today for week 13. Talking a little bit of my experience as a Raiders fan. Week 13 is here. It's here. The season is about to go off. No more pretending. It's all here. We're going to discuss it. I have a lot of thoughts. So, let's begin. All right, it is 10.15 Central Time. Sunday Night Football is over. Jeez, it was a rough game. Omar is here, although he is going to be joining at some point here. He was here, and now his screen went black. I don't know if he went AWOL because of the result of this San Francisco game. I don't know. I'm going to wait for I'm him. Here. I'm oh, here. Oh, wait. He is I'm here. here. I am here. Okay, I wasn't sure where you went. I, I wasn't sure if you bailed on the show. <laughs> Given the result of Sunday night football. I'm, you know, it was very difficult for me to um, understand watch this game. So I got into other stuff this evening and I'm not even paying attention to football the rest of the evening. Oh, geez. I'm, you I'm, sound I'm very talk, riled I'm up. Gonna, I'm going to talk football, but I really don't care about <clears throat> football right now. All right. So your emotions seem very, wow. You seem like you're lashing out. Absolutely, Patrick. That was embarrassing. <clears throat> you know, I I wrote down as soon as McCaffrey did that weird toss where he gave himself up because something's wrong. I don't think I've ever seen the air being let out of a team in one play quite so clearly like that before because it was over. It was so over as soon as McCaffrey came up limp because he was running well. They were they got three points on the first drive. And he goes to the sideline, straight to the tent, straight to the tunnel. And it was done. It was completely done when we saw that. Oh, my God. So when did you give up on this game? That play. You just said it. That play. It was It was over. It was just so done. It and was there, was a little, there was a little hint of the Niners getting back into it. And then Juszczyk fumbled on the two-yard line. And it was like, oh, right. This is how the season has gone all year long. This is right. how it's going to go no matter what the situation. Other than the Niners looking pretty slick in their white uniforms in the snow, it was over. I don't know why they sent Jake Moody out there to attempt a 55-yard field goal. That made, that made that no was, sense. I thought that was brutal. Like, why are you doing this to poor Jake Moody? That made no sense. They just have not – they don't have enough playmakers <clears throat> on the defensive side of the ball. Um, uh, and then, you know – you know, the sad thing about the season is that this was a season where the division was very winnable. Let, let me yeah, they're still that. out of first place by what? One game? Two games? Two games. Still two games. They're two games back. You know? <laughs> did you did you put any weight into Chris Collinsworth saying like midway through the third, you know, this team can get hot. <laughs> what do you? <laughs> no, 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 no weight at all. No weight at all. Um, and, and, you know, they're not this again, there's still a lot of talent on the team. They just haven't put it together at this point. They'd have to win out, I think. Yeah. Um, and their schedule looks okay. But if there's anything about this Niners team, every game they make difficult. So right. the Rams, they have the dolphins. It's, it's going to be hard. Seahawks. It doesn't matter if these teams are 500 or not. San Francisco seems to find a way to just make all these games difficult, much like a lot of other teams in the NFL. But San Francisco just seems like they're just on the losing end of of everything. They just can't get it right. It's I don't think it's just injuries, though. You can no. blame injuries, but there's something else missing here with this team. And Cincinnati the same way. Something is missing. I don't know what it is exactly because it doesn't seem like it's effort or it's play calling. I don't know. Can you put your finger on what exactly 
is wrong with the 49ers? I can't. Um, I, it doesn't seem like Shanahan was very prepared this season um, as opposed to other. It just didn't, they didn't seem to adjust well to any, you know, during at any point this season, it just seemed like they kept trying to do the same things that they found were very successful over these last few years in these NFC championship runs and, you know, a couple of Super Bowl appearances. It seems like they tried to do the same thing. It's just, they just couldn't do it this time. Maybe, maybe uh, the defenses have caught up to their scheme. Yeah. Super Bowl slump, defensive caught up, inability to adapt. I don't know. I don't know. I, I wrote this down that because I'm watching McCaffrey limp off the field. We're ta- they talk about all the injuries. I'm like, if there's anybody who needs to step up or needs to take leadership of this team, it's got to be Purdy. And I wrote down just in the league, the quarterbacks who are just out and out leaders on their team. And I really only came up with three names. I got Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow. Uh, just these like leaders of the team. I don't think Purdy's there yet because he's maybe he's too no. young. Maybe it's not his personality. But no, I really no, think no. he it's needed to he lead this team. You no, know, he hasn't had that. You know that huge. You know, well, I mean, he he has made it to the the the, 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 the he, there have been playoff wins, but I think now because look, Purdy doesn't have a big arm. You know, we can agree on that. He doesn't have a big arm, and um. Uh, but so he he's going to need, you know, he's not very flashy, you know, so he's going to need to win a big game, you know, yeah, he's gonna maybe need it's to win a big game. Yeah. I, I mean, when you look at Mahomes and, and Josh Allen and Joe Burrow, even though he's lost almost all his games, but three games, um, there's something about him. There's a swagger. And I'm, I guess I was hoping Purdy would take that step this year because I really like Purdy. I, I just don't think it's been there this year maybe this is his growing year because what is this his third year yeah maybe yeah. this is his growing year although all those quarterbacks i just named had it by year three yeah it's, but, it's, it's tough though because this is a contract year right this is going to be interesting i mean now from here on out because of all the teams that are losing too it becomes interesting because of what's going forward right with the team itself taking yourself you know once Buffalo went up 21 to three, I think we knew it was like, okay, this is, there's no way the Niners can play from behind. And then on top of that, when Josh Allen threw the pass where the receiver pitched it to him and he scored a touchdown and Collinsworth absolutely lost his mind. Yes. <laughs> it was like, did. okay, this is and a fun but, snow game at this point. But how embarrassing was that? How embarrassing was that play that they basically went back to, you know, back door, you know, backyard, <laughs> football you know uh you right. know thanksgiving, a thanksgiving game that kind of looked like one of the plays we had on on, on thanksgiving <laughs> i uh, know we andrew, have to talk about our thanksgiving when, when andrew went nuts your brother went brother. nuts trying to find the pylon whatever pylon he <laughs> right. saw was out there right maybe we should add a new award to the show called the andrew award the andrew and it's just... Ram- the andrew ramirez who went crazy you know <laughs> who, who went crazy uh, on the football field <laughs> right and that award goes to the person who just went total red line on right. the sunday like maybe so, we'll so add that add, award moving so forward let's add, let's add that award and let's go i'm um, an early award uh winner uh, george pickens for the steelers who apparently can't get it together and just mm. needs to misbehave <laughs> <laughs> oh mike come on like look at this pitch mike uh he, he's having fun out there like they came back from commercial and chris Collinsworth was still like come on mike like come on I don't know what's going on with those two, but Collinsworth was like trying to get something out of Mike. Maybe he's trying to get him excited or or something, but Collinsworth was amped. He loved that play. That goes in the Collinsworth Hall of Fame. That the, I'm not going to give it away now, but that 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 play was the base uh, basis of my favorite quote this week uh, this evening. Yeah, there was a lot there. All right, taking the game out of it for a second. Where do you stand on snow games in general? Love them. Love them. I love that game. And I did not appreciate that the Buffalo fan threw snowballs at an injured Christian McCaffrey as he was being, mm. you know, taken out. But, <laughs> um, right. But I, I, I am a big fan, obviously, of the snow. And, you know, they're getting a new, you know, <clears> I, I saw they had aerial footage of their new soon to be stadium that's going to be opening in 2026. It looks beautiful. I, I, I think they're going to still keep it open 
open yeah, air, right? I think it's still open, and it said like 60% of the fans will be covered. So we, it seems like we can get a mix of both worlds here. We can get outdoor, buffalo, tough conditions, but the fran- the fans don't have to be so brutalized for yeah. going to this game. So I, I like that. I like outdoor football. I do think there's a fine line for how much snow can be on the field and the game can actually still be number one, watchable, number two, playable. Like, cause I think this game was right at the borderline because San Francisco I, fans were say, falling to me, down. To me, this would have been considered a borderline game. There was that game a few years yeah. ago where Shady McCoy had a good game against the <clears> Lions <throat> in Philadelphia. I and mean, we're talking the snow was just below their knees. And that just, at the, that wasn't fun right. to watch. Yeah, we can't. We had a Buffalo game canceled a couple years ago where it's just, it's too much. It seemed like it was snowy, but not particularly cold either. So when you can right. find that balance where they can still play, although if you watch the, the pregame show, Jack Collinsworth and, <laughs> and Tony Dungy look like they're about to uh, go uh, bushwhacking in Antarctica with the way they were dressed up. So maybe it was cold, although the players didn't seem to be overly wrapped up. They, I mean, the head coach of Buffalo is still wearing a ball cap. Right, right. As well. So I, I don't think it was cold. It seemed like it was playable, and it was at that borderline where I, the field is still. In fact, yeah. I would have had, I probably would have been on the side of, I would have been more upset had they not played it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but no, that was definitely playable weather. No, no doubt about it. Actually, now yes, borderline, but leaning on the side of playable. Leaning uh, on, I'm, I'm a little bit right there, almost on the side of not playable because we, I don't like when we can't see the field. I almost wish there was some way we could shake out the field between quarters, so we can get the yard lines back, we can see some green, and then let the snow build up, and then shake it out again. But uh, it, it man, everything managed. The ball was still thrown. I mean. It, this was more the Bills were, were too good because the Niners couldn't tackle anybody. And then yet flip it, Bills were in the backfield for ever, almost every single run after McCaffrey went out. And they couldn't really do a whole heck of a lot. It was it was rough. So where are you on the Niners? It's just time to look to next year. Yeah, we're looking at next year. I mean, the sad thing is, yes, we are only two games you know, out of uh, the division lead. But again, I don't see us winning out. Although, yes, is it a... Is it a winnable schedule? I think, yeah, and, and it, maybe last year that would have been definite, you know, last couple of years that would have been a thing for the Niners to just win out on those games, you know, and, uh, but they were never in a position, they haven't been in a position like this lately, you know, so, yeah, um, it, it's just not, I don't think it's going to happen. So it's time to just focus on next year. I think we have a lot of money committed to the offensive side of the football. I think we're going to have to rebuild the defense. I really do, because it's, we're, we're just getting beat down. Um, you know, in in every area of the defense. So um, I'm done talking about the Niners. We can move on. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they won on this little mini run, but I I don't see it happening the way it the way it's gone down. And it put the Bengals in there too. Like, is we know they're good, but this is the season from hell. We said yeah. it. There's so many teams going through through the season from hell. The my, Niners are, are one of them. I don't yeah. know where it's going. Co- like you said, coaching is is probably some of it in there. What coaching is always at the heart of it. As yeah, we'll I talk about, see, I, I see that. I, I think that when you look at the conferences, that's definitely the cross conference similarity to the Niners. I think the Bengals have that kind of talent, but they they're just not getting W's, you know. And I think a lot of it is defensive failure. Pittsburgh, Russell Wilson puts up forty four on you at home. Yeah, that's yeah, you, that's you, huge. You, you you couldn't stop anything. You know, you couldn't stop anything. We uh, saw Dr. such a range of coaching this week alone. You know, right. going from the Thursday games to um, some of the early games that ended close today, it was such a spectrum. And the funny thing was, some bad teams were coached well just to get a shot at the end of the game. We'll talk about it. Uh, just wrapping up on San Francisco Buffalo MVP race. Barkley and Derrick Henry went head to head today. Mahomes mm-hmm. had his Thursday. Any Josh Allen in the running? He's in the running. He's yeah. Because we know he's, MVPs aren't given to running backs anyway. So we got to think. But, but, but this may be the year. This, this could be the exception. The I, I think it could be the exception because I think the NFL is, you know, the NFL changes. You know, remember when we were when we were kids, it seemed like there was that that bell cow running back. And gradually, you know, 
the you know the offense is opened up very pass happy obviously the rules benefited the quarterback and the wide receiver given how hard they were on 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 defensive you know defensive backs you know getting too handsy uh off the line so now but you know so i think the nfl is a, a product that needs to change there needs to be more you know in game evolution to keep it interesting right mm-hmm. so i think that the nfl would be very better served um to to try to get more uh, attention on you know these running backs yeah yeah throw them throw them something throw throw them one this year there's definitely some worthy candidates yeah i'm, really? you know, I'm, I'm impressed the, uh, they got the win today the buccaneers you know irving you know that they, they got you know jones they got they got some pretty good runners there in, in tampa bay um you know uh, uh, jonathan taylor still running well so let's not discount uh, I think yes, you're right. Do quarterbacks generally get the MVP? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. But could this be a year that the running back gets, you know, attention and maybe a little extra loving because of, you know, the seasons that Henry and Bar- I remember, and they're also having these seasons after they were basically given their walking papers by the franchises that brought them up. You yeah. Know? So right. Think- yeah. The second go around, running back Derrick yeah. Henry, Saquon. So, Good right. story. And- and so I think that there is going to be a little extra love for, for running backs this year because of yeah. those two. Yeah, maybe something for the running backs because, like, we talked, you you said it, like the second go-around for Saquon, Derrick Henry, we've seen the opposite of that, Zeke Elliott. <laughs> right. The second go-around did not work out. No, so maybe it's the year of the running Dijon, back. Look, Dijon Robinson, Najee Harris, Joe Mixon, uh, uh, Jacobs, or I'm talking about the leading yep. uh, fantasy Aaron Jones guys. too. You know, Aaron Jones, um, it, it, Cook for the Bills had a big game today. Uh, Brown in a losing effort for the Bengals had a, a, a good game. So let's let's really get these guys back and let's let's focus again because again, like you're said, the running back. The focus the, the, mm. the focus again. Remember how mm. much fun we had watching Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, Bo Jackson, Marcus. Sanders, oh, those Marcus were the days. Craig. You know, even some Jerome Bettis, and, 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 and that kind of led us into the Marshall Falk years, the Edger and James years. Um, you know, right. Uh, and then we kind of got, then we got to Adrian Peterson, Shady McCoy, and then slowly, slowly, yeah, slowly backs became disposable. Right, and 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 and, uh, and that's unfair. You know what I mean? Because mm. it's it's so unfair to their position because you know they're the ones that hurt themselves the most out there in my opinion yeah they're it's getting... true <laughs> and so it's like they, their careers are being cut short because of all the punishment they're getting so it's kind of like yeah you're making money but like it's also hurting your longevity you know be, being being yeah. good at that position yeah maybe see you're the running back i hope so because we have some good running back performances this year and it's such a vital part of the league you have to do everything and we saw some of it today and i'm glad uh, last note, Chiefs or Bills? Who do you have as the number one AFC team? What, what was the question? Chiefs or Bills? Who do you have as number one AFC team? It's the Bills right now. They 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 already beat them once, and I think they, there's no reason why they couldn't beat them again. Okay, I think I agree with you. I think this this is the better quality of win given uh their week too so well sunday night was fun but i mean a lot happened this week omar i mean you and i had a a pretty packed week you know i'm back in the studio now it's kind of cold where i am so i put my raiders jacket on today so let's let's just go through the week starting with thanksgiving football we had one of the (laughs) all-time coach bonehead moves in the detroit Chicago game, which I watched with some Chicago fans. Just the, I don't know if there could be a bigger fireball offense than the way that game ended. And Iberflus got fired. The next day, the Flus is loose. He's gone. Completely justified. Watching that game, um, were you confused on. like everybody else? Did you Can you recall? I mean, I've, we, we, you know what? We got to do our research for maybe um uh, for next week. Let's discuss bonehead blunders of all <laughs> that was a good one that no that i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not saying it as a being a prisoner of the moment because it happened it's so fresh that was an all-time blunder that was an all-time i want to get fired 
unbelievable. And then to top it off in the press conference where he says, like, you know, uh, I, th- I think we played it right. <laughs> like, oh, did you? <laughs> was that apparently, I mean, reading, I'm reading reports that there was a huge fight in the Bears locker room where the cornerback had to be pulled off of Eberflus. And they get him out of the yeah. locker room and his press conference was 30 minutes late. So something was going down. That was ugly. The Bears were ugly. Caleb Williams had his usual 50% awesome plays, 50% terrible plays. That was the early game. Set us up for the late game, which was the staple, the Thanksgiving tradition, New York Giants, Dallas Cowboys. And I think the Cowboys did us all a family favor by winning that game on Thanksgiving. Because you know my family's Cowboys. I'm a man without a country when it comes to my family. And so they won. And I think that made Thanksgiving a lot better. Do you? What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I think the everyone was in a good mood. You know, we kind of saw a good game with the line. But, you know, I'll, I'll be at mm-hmm. the... And, you know, and, and the Lions were controlling that game. And the Bears, to their credit, they did kind of sneak back on them, right? Right. Um, right. And, they had a big fourth quarter. And it also know, made... Let's not forget that. You know, let's not forget that. That, like, wow, Iberflus looking good. He's got these guys, you know, coming back. But then he finds <laughs> right. himself out of a job. You know, it's just... <laughs> It's, it's uh, like, wait a second, it, this drive is going too well. How like, can I, am, I mess this we up? Are, we are we are coming back Mm-mm. on the road against what's the NFL's best team, and we have a shot to win this game, yeah. you know? Iberflus is essentially playing week to week for his job at that point, and he re- I even think if they attempted a field goal and missed it or something like that, he probably would have kept his job. Because at least you, you gave yourself a shot. He didn't even, <laughs> that was bad. That was that was so bad. And then Antonio Pierce said the next day, "Hey, Eberflus, hey, hold my beer real quick. We'll talk uh, about that." You know, but that's you know, I, you know, I like Antonio Pierce. I really do. I think he's a great motivator. It's just, it just seems like he wants to be more the a player out there than the coach. You know, I I, mm-hmm. I can see like Antonio Pierce if he still had it. I think he'd want to suit up and just go out there himself and get it done. I'd like to see that. Why not for these last these last uh, month and a half of games? Player the, coach. Yeah, get a little player coach out there. I don't mind that right. at all. That, 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 that could work. And, and they, who knows? Maybe they, they, they improve, you know, some of the tackling out there. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, but I, I just don't know. I, I don't know if he's going to be um, the coach uh, next year. Yeah, you've said it all year. You're, you're not as... You're not as confident as I am for for year two for Antonio Pierce. What about Dallas? Here's a game I want to call. Would you be surprised? Would you be surprised if Dallas made a run this last half of the season, like one out or won all their games but one or something? And I then it becomes be, a I, question I, I, of like, should we keep McCarthy? No, I would be surprised because let's before we, you know, we, you know, thank God they won at home on Thanksgiving. If you're a Cowboys fan, thank God. Um, but they still played a very bad Giants football team. Oh so yeah. Let's not, Let's not get crazy and say that. Hey, no, hey, not, I'm not getting crazy. I'm just saying, would it be weird to you if Dallas yes, was the team yeah, that had a, with, had a good... With, with, that, with that team and this coach, it would be weird if they were to pull something off. And I'd, I'd be, <laughs> okay. He, he, he should be a coach of the year candidate if he, if he goes on a run with this. Oh, <laughs> interesting. But, 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 he won't, but he won't, so... <laughs> Uh, quick uh, Sunday night football note. Marvin Harrison has now put on an additional hat and they still have these three poor bastards reporting from outside <laughs> at the desk. NBC, what are you doing to Tony Dungy has got to be 65 years old. What are you doing to this poor man? Yeah. Can we get an umbrella? Something? Yeah, you, Jack you, Collinsworth. His you, eyes you, are shut. You you made a little mistake. You first said Marvin Harrison back out there. I'm like, Marvin Harrison's out there. <laughs> Oh, did I call him Marvin Harrison? Oh, Rodney Harrison. I got Rodney Rodney Harrison. Harrison, Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. The uh, NCAA, the uh, NAACP is going to be down my throat for that one. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Okay. Vegas versus Casey, the first ever Black Friday game. Las Vegas Raiders play their best game of the season. They're driving for a chance, not tie, to win the game. And... We have the mysterious ghost snap. Hits Aiden O'Connell in the chest. It's on the ground. We've got... Next, we have a referee conference of trying to decide what the actual penalty is to be called. It's important because if it's an illegal procedure, it's a dead ball. 
right. if it's a legal shift, the play goes on, and the and Kansas City has the chance to decline it. They go with illegal shift, gives Kansas City the ball. We don't even get a chance to attempt the field goal. I'm going to say my ending went a little less worse than the Bear, Bears one, but what do you think? Um, no, I mean, no, 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 <laughs> that there is no, there is no, no ending worse than the bears. Um, <laughs> right. Okay, um, good. You agree with but, me. But, but, but although, although it just seems like, was it so much a bad ending for the Raiders or was it just mm -hmm. another great ending for the chiefs? You know what I mean? Cause yeah. it just seems like the chiefs week to week. Yes. Is that an impressive record? It's the best record in the league right now, I know. but it just seems like the way it's happened Again, I don't want to take you know a win, a win's a win. You know what I mean. And at the end of the day, that's all you care about. I can't think of a sport where there's all these statistics and all these categories you can analyze a team's success, but the bottom line is success is only measured with the win or the loss on the football field. That's yeah. the only sport in 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 in, in all of sports. It's just about the win and the loss. Yeah, okay. maybe analytics has misled us all these years. I agree. I think so. You know, we gotta. There is something called the eye test, and if they keep winning like this, even if the Raiders are snapping the ball <laughs> mysteriously, oh, such a hard. Let, let me tell you how I watched this game to start off because this was Black Friday game. I'm flying back home from the Thanksgiving trip, and my flight is at twelve uh, twelve forty five. The game starts at one, so I'm like, okay. Am I going to pay the, the $8 on the flight for internet? And about eight minutes into the flight, I'm like, screw it. I'm doing it. So I buy internet on the flight so I can watch Amazon Prime on the flight. So that was my plan. I watch essentially about the first half on the plane. Then I get to baggage. I get my bag and I'm like, okay, the fourth quarter is about to start. I can either rush home and try and watch whatever's left of the fourth quarter, or <clears throat> I can stay in the airport, use their Wi-Fi, and watch it on my on my tablet here in baggage claim. What do you think I did? Baggage claim. You baggage I sat, claimed it. <laughs> I sat in baggage claim for about an hour just sitting there watching <laughs> watching a tablet while people came and go from their from their Thanksgiving trips. And as soon as like the fumble happens, I throw my hands in the air. I get pissed off. I walk the length of the airport and I pack away the tablet and I just start making my way home. <laughs> that's, that's how I did it. I don't know if that was the best way to do it, but I felt that was my only option is sit in the airport and watch the game. Like you have to finish these games. It was brutal. And I run, it was their best game. Aiden O'Connell was, can really put the ball in great places uh, we were having a good time. We had a shot at it. We missed three field goals. That was bad. And then we didn't get the shot at the end of it. I'm fully willing to believe any Chiefs conspiracies that the league is rigged to when it comes right. to it. Because I was really hoping for an illegal procedure. I think we would have got on the next play five or seven yards. I think we would have got to an attempted field goal. I really think we would have. The way they were playing, they were spiking the ball when you need to spike it. They were calling timeouts when it was time to call timeouts. And then, yet, this is how the Raiders season goes. Just just pathetic. I'm not going to actively root for a tank. I can't do it. But if it happens, I'm still happy with it. Right. So, tough. tough another tough beat for the Raiders. I like Aiden O'Connell. What a game. But, oh, that was, that was rough. That was a rough way to go. Um, yet we haven't even talked about our Thanksgiving yet because it was we, great. I, I, we, you know, we drank a son, lot of food. My we even son, ran a 5k in the morning. My son said that that was one of the best things. That was the best Thanksgiving he ever had. Yeah. All right. Well, here's the notes of Thanksgiving. First of all, week we wake up early to do the local 5k run and I try my best, but it's, it's kind I, of a big, well, what's it? But it's kind of a big deal. It is the 48th annual. I mean, it, it, it is a Yeah, big we did the 48th thing. annual YMCA <laughs> turkey trot. And I got to say, the surprise of Thanksgiving is your son, who's 11 years old, puts up, I have his stats here, a 650 mile? Yeah, he's for, done it before, yeah. For three miles? And I turn around, I'm like, is this kid done with the 5K? <laughs> 
He's done. And then, like, you know, little kids at that age, like, will find any reason to kind of talk trash or talk themselves up. He seems completely agnostic about it. He's like, <laughs> he's like oh, yeah, that was, that, that, was, that was hard. I was like, wow, you were flying. How'd you feel? Good. Okay. Have you run that fast before? I, I don't never, know. I never, I never had. Sometimes. Do you like he like he doesn't really seem to be impressed with himself or not impressed with himself that he was like an 11 year old kid who beat 90 percent of the runners out there so that's how our our thanksgiving starts then all the food comes in and at some point we have the first annual thanksgiving football matchup in the backyard and then this is where my younger brother somehow from the depths comes out to turn into full-on gronkowski in this game, he was pulling right. no punches. He, I think he bowled over somebody's cousin. And yeah. the only, only way I can describe my brother is he is like a race car. You know, like a race car is idling. Right. It's going to stall out. It, it, race cars don't idle that well. But when you get that thing up to speed, get out of the way. That's how my brother is. And he won the flag football game for, for my team. And at some point... I think you just got out of his way. You didn't want anything to do with him. You were like, why is he taking this so seriously? You, you, you peaced out from the game, Omar. Explain yeah. yourself. Yeah. I, you know, but I, but the thing about the thing, hold on about that, that play. I want to go back to that one play, that last winning touchdown. Yeah. Uh, for Andrew. Uh, I had a chance to make a stop. <laughs> what happened? I made eye contact with him and, 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 and it, I know and it was even dark outside. But right. We're was, fighting daylight. There was a certain redness in his, eye, you know, <laughs> that, that, that just, I, I didn't feel safe when I saw him running towards me. Let's just, put yeah. I think those were your words to everybody in the, in the backyard. It's like, I don't feel safe. <laughs> I don't feel safe. It's too late for me to change my best quote, but that should be up there as Omar Carmona. I don't feel safe. <laughs> Jesus, that was Thanksgiving. Any other notes from our Thanksgiving? There was a lot of drinking. There was a lot of eating. One thing I noticed, there a, a lot of, and I hope I don't, I want to um, say something to the, the everyone who's ever invited me over for Thanksgiving or ever me hosted for Thanksgiving, you know, because I'm not a cook, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to say every, everybody looks like when they make something, everybody tries. It's so delicious. It looks delicious. I don't want to offend anybody by telling them that I I only eat turkey stuffing and potatoes. That's all I want to. What? And yes. Wait, uh, I don't. No, I didn't know this. That's all you eat. That's all. I I don't want to eat any. And, and then pumpkin pie after. I I just want to eat that. If there's a ham that somebody, I may take another meat in. But it you is don't. So you don't eat any turkey. I eat no. It's just turkey stuffing oh. and potatoes. And potatoes. That's it. So you're skipping all the appetizers. I skip, and and I and everybody why? tries so hard and they make dishes look so beautiful. So I don't want to offend any. I don't But I don't, why do you skip these foods? I because I love Thanksgiving stuffing and potatoes and I only want to make room for that. Oh, so this is a this is like a very calculated decision. Very calculated. Okay, got it. So only turkey, only stuffing, only potatoes. That means you're leaving out like the green beans. You're leaving out. What about yams? You're gonna go go yes on yams. That's a potato. No salad. No, 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 no. I did not. No room for that. Hmm. Wow. So that's what you eat, but you don't want to offend anybody, and you're not a cook. So you just go straight to your three your three go tos. Right. Well, that's an interesting note. I didn't know that about you. I wasn't I wasn't keeping tabs on what people are eating, but now maybe I should. A lot of eating, a lot of drinking. I gotta I give made, you. I, I gotta give you. I'm just about. You're about to. I, I gotta give you props. You made a great cocktail. For yep, the I did my specialty drink for the holidays. It was the pumpkin pie mixed drink cocktail. I went through two bot. I made two bottles of it. Went through all of it. I think I could have got away with a third. That was a big hit because I've made cocktails before where people didn't weren't really keen on it. So this was a big hit for me. I I, uh, I was appreciative that that happened. Overall, very good Thanksgiving. Everybody looked very tired by the end of the day as well. We didn't have any fights. We didn't have any political fights, luckily. We didn't have any angry football conversations. 
I would say overall, everything went very smoothly at the house. So big, big win for Thanksgiving. The flag football went through. I'm just glad nobody got injured. Well, glad, glad Andrew wasn't arrested. Yeah, that's true. That's a win. So that was our Thanksgiving. Pretty packed week because essentially, essentially we had football from Thursday on this week. Yep. Big time. All right. So let's go to a quick who looked good, who looked bad today. I wrote down who looked good. I gave it to Bryce Young. What a comeback he good. He for this good. season. We can, I guess we can just talk about these games quickly too. Um, yeah, Bryce Young, Young looked good. You know, again, it's a division that had the Panthers won that game. They're like in the thick of that division. You know, oh, were um, they? I I didn't even really. <laughs> I yeah, really it's a bad division, a Pat. It's a bad division. The Saints, uh, the Buccaneers. Um, you know, almost. Lost oh yeah, it. yeah, right, Bucks. Um, I mean, you know, I think Falcons. Cousins throws, Cousins throws four interceptions today. <laughs> Cousins is back. Cousins is back. Hey, well, let's stop. Who looked good? The Chargers look good. Um, oh, you put them in the who look good? I they look good, Pat. They they looked really good. The defense looks stout. I be, don't fall asleep on them. You know, that that's that's a division aside from the Raiders. <laughs> sorry, mm-hmm. sorry, Pat. I, as as you know, you're you're wearing your Raider attire. But that's a division that the you know, Broncos, Chargers, Chiefs, man, that's those those are three potential, you know, playoff teams. Yeah, I, I agree. Chargers look good today. At some point we need to have the Chargers conversation. And they have a huge game next week. They play the Chiefs Sunday night. Mark it on your calendar. That's going to be great. I really hope we have the Herbert breakout game at some point. I, I, I would love to see a Mahomes. I would love to see a Mahomes mm-hmm. Herbert shootout. Um, yeah, but, but but it seems like the Chiefs aren't 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 sh- they're not getting into shootouts. You know, no, this, this isn't shootout. the shootout year. If there's any game that I'd love to see it happen and a worthy opponent of Herbert do it, this would be the Sunday game because I mean, who doesn't not like the chargers they're just like no, the no. plucky underdog no, no, let's not let's not just knock the chargers it, justin herbert's gonna have to play a great game to beat the chiefs yeah his receivers need to step up he really really is lacking he, in he, receivers he's had some accurate you know i've always been a herbert fan he's had some accuracy issues too it's not just yeah. his receiver um but but again I, I but i think harbaugh's working with them so they they look good um i thought you know i thought the panthers look good going back to that game real quick i thought they looked good like you said bryce young he looked good um, Did you watch you know, the last drive? Yeah, and that, he it was, was, it was awesome, masterful, masterful to find going find going from what we watched on Thursday with the the breakdown of Williams having a good play, then getting sacked, or some like Bryce Young looked like he was in control of yeah. that offense. It was really really good. So then I was thinking like, hey, can you get the comeback player of the year? Because of your one year, <laughs> how far has right. he come since getting like everyone was like, "Oh, he's terrible. He's washed. He's benched." And now look at this turnaround. Not only in play, but like just the mental state a player yeah. has to have to say like, "Okay, I got the role again. I'm going for it." And I also like how Andy Dalton, the backup quarterback, just sort of follows him around on the sideline and just hypes him up all yeah. game long, like he's got his own veteran hype man. They've stumbled onto something that is really effective on that Carolina team. Really fun team. And then flip it, we get to watch a classic Baker Mayfield drive down the field to tie the game. Yeah, great use great. of timeouts. He, he looked great. Great know, spike. He, he didn't he didn't seem he didn't seem rattled. He, you know, he went out there, made some completions. No. Mike Evans the veteran, I mean, Hall of Famer, automatic, you know, you mm-hmm. Baker just throws it to him and he's going to come up with, the, you know, come down with the catch. Yeah, Baker had a great run as well in that. Uh, we go into OT, which you know I hate OT, but we go into OT. Um, who wins? Uh, Carolina, I think, wins the toss. They're driving. No, no, sorry. Tampa Bay wins the toss. They punt it. Carolina gets it. They're driving. And then... We have one of the most depressing fumbles from a running back on Carolina. He fumbles it. Now Tampa Bay is driving. And what does Fox do? They zoom in on this ru- the running back Hubbard for almost the entire drive of Tampa Bay. And he's got the sad face. He knows it's his fault. Tampa Bay gets a chip shot. They win the game. OT. Tampa Bay. Atlanta's in their division. Carolina, New Orleans. Tampa Bay, very sneaky. 
Very yeah. sneaky good that Tampa Bay team. You know, and, and we go to the other the the other the other divisional you know rival they have there the Saints did not look good against the Rams you know. Uh, yep. I, Saints I, did Saints things. I don't know I don't know what their plan is going to be for quarterback. Obviously Derek Carr <laughs> is not going to be bringing any Super Bowls to New Orleans. Um, as much as I like him personally, it just doesn't seem yeah. like. Well, we have so many teams where that's their quarterback. It's like I like him, but. Is this really their guy, Derek Carr, Aiden O'Connell? Um, who else is in there? Um, there's a bunch in there where you're just like, I just don't know about this guy long term. Right. Where no, if no, an opportunity think, comes along, the they would take I it. Think, I think now, you know, we're talking about I'm not saying it's as embarrassing as Jimmy G. Uh don't don't take me back to those days, Pat. But you know, I, I yeah, I think I think there are some quarterbacks, obviously, you know. You don't look at Tommy DeVito and see, you know, a, a playoff winner. You know what I mean? You, <laughs> right. You, you don't. You don't look at. You don't look at Gardner Minshew and you know see playoff winners. Um, yeah, we never got any Minshew mania this year. You know, I, I, I as much as I love Jameis Winston, is I mean, is is he really going to put a a franchise on his back and and, and <laughs> right? A, there uh, really a, aren't that many good quarterbacks. There really isn't. No. There's like six. Right. That's it. Then, uh, L.A. Then, Rams, New Orleans. Whoever I wrote down, whoever wins this game, we're going to have to pretend to believe in this team for another two weeks. LA Rams win. Do you believe in the LA Rams? No, not you at see, all. This I, is okay. Well, you took longer than I thought you would take, but this is what this game does. Like somehow we're going to have to pretend to believe in these teams. No, I don't. I don't. I, I, I don't. They got some great players, but I just think when it comes down to it, they're not going to win these tough games. I think they're going to be close, but I don't think they're going to win it. They got Puka Nakua makes an upside down catch almost every single game now. Stafford is awesome, but I don't know if I believe in them to beat Seattle. <laughs> Not like I'm like, they can't beat the Chiefs. I don't know if they'll beat Seattle next week. They do this to us every year is one week. They're good. The next week they totally flop. So you're don't believe. Right. So your pick for NFC West, is it Seattle? I, I think I, I don't don't discount the Cardinals. You can write off the Niners mm. and the Rams. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Niners and Rams out. Cardinals. You want to talk some Cardinals? Because they had a great game today. They had a great game until they lost it. They went into Minnesota. Important game for both. Great early game as well. Um, they get We get to see Daniel Jones on the sideline for Minnesota who signed him. Right. What a flip. You went from the hopeless New York Giants to potentially the best team in the league and you don't even have to play. You're just on the team. How awesome is that? It yeah, does take a last drive for Minnesota to win this game. They win 23, 22 Sam Darnold looks like a fucking hall of famer. Now, none of us would have predicted that at the beginning of the year. So Minnesota NFC, where do you got Minnesota or Detroit? I get you. It's Detroit. I, I, uh, the, 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 okay. The, they're, they're just Fair. a complete football team. Uh, mm -hmm. Although, although they may be um, uh, benching one of their running backs for posting a TikTok with you know with in front of all the in front of a whiteboard with all their plays and cadences. Um, oh, I didn't see that. Look at you with the uh, insider knowledge report. You're like Team Z over there. Jameer Jameer Gibbs uh, <laughs> you know, posted TikTok and he's doing it in front of the the offensive leaderboard. It's the reporter that had to bring it to Dan Campbell's attention. Oh no, these phones are going to be the death of us. Just from a societal point of view, we're going to record something, but something's going to be in there that once wasn't. It's, it's going to kill us. Phones and the internet. It's going to be like our our volcano. You know, like a, we discover every once in a while, a volcano wiped out an ancient civilization that was advanced. For us, right. it'll be phones. Would you still like Arizona a little bit here? Yes. Yes. I do. Arizona look good to go all the way to Minnesota. They're definitely a team that I don't trust on the road, Arizona. Right. And they actually yeah. put a good game together. They're going to have to have a game, you know, in their in their home stadium to to win in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I like them though. I could see a but wild again, card. Again, but that, I think that's that's the great thing about being in that division mm -hmm. is the only way you're going to <clears throat> the only way you're going to get in the playoffs is if you win the division. And the bonus is you get a home game. Yeah. Arizona's one of those teams where, like, if they make a run, if they're good, if they have to go on a road for a wild card playoff game, they're losing that game by 30 points. I just know they are. But they're going to be fun up until that game. But 
Who knows? Maybe they'll squeak out the division. Here's a game that maybe really wasn't worth watching. However, this was really close. And almost all the games were pretty close in the early slate. Indianapolis at New England. Anthony Richardson might be a little comeback player of the year. He's all of a sudden really good. 63-yard field goal attempt for the win for New England. They don't make it, but this was the tape the Bears should have watched. What New England did just to get to the 50 to attempt this field goal was pretty impressive because they did the thing where they used all their timeouts. There was like eight seconds left, and then they threw a perfect... No, no, they had one timeout left. They throw... There's eight seconds. They throw a ball over the middle. The guy instantly slides timeout, two seconds on the clock, a chance to a chance to kick a field goal. You can't ask anything more out of Drake May and the offense and the coaches for using their timeouts. I think they get a points for that. That was really impressive. After we watched the Bears completely screw it up, the fact that right. New England gave themselves a chance, very hey, good, very say, good game. They're, they're, they're going to also be my, my I already, I'm going to report it now. They are going to be my um, pick for uniforms um, oh, they had the good uniforms today. They had the old uniform, but it was also against the Colts. And uh, for those who don't know, the Colts used to be in the old AFC East um, with the Jets, Dolphins, Bills, and Patriots. And and so that 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 game, remember, the, there were years in the late '80s and early '90s that both those teams couldn't win football games. You know, they were they were like yeah. the you know the one in fifteen teams. You know, they had two in thirteen seasons. You know, two yeah. and, and and two in fourteen seasons. And and it just seemed like and it was when they were wearing those uniforms and obviously the Colts uniform still looks the same from you know back when you know, yeah that's change, true but 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 it, it was nice it was interesting to see that uh, the old uh, it kind of blurred my eyes and I was back in you know 1989 for a second. yeah I like that the old uh, Jack Tredu <laughs> Colts <Yeah. laughs> fun game in a non really needed way like th- none of these teams are gonna do anything this year but. Still playing hard. Impressive. I was really impressed with that drive by the by the Patriots, even though they didn't make the field goal. Then we had, I think, the marquee game <clears throat> of the early slate. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. This game was like 24 to 21 at halftime. <laughs> so much yeah. scoring going in this game. If you had the over, this thing hit by halfway through the second quarter. Cincinnati did the usual. They played super tough. Ultimately, they lose. 44 to 38. Like they came back enough to, I think, attempt an onside. God, it's just too bad Cincinnati can't win games. Because they're, yeah. they're really good. Joe Burrow tries so hard and they just can't win any games. What what do you think's wrong with them? Uh, you know what? Let's not, it's just, you know, let's, let's, before we talk about, you know, I think we've been talking a lot about what's wrong with uh, Cincinnati. They're just, they're not getting defensive stops and, and, and Joe Burrow is being is expected to be putting up these, you know, unhuman numbers. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so, yeah. uh, it's 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 a tough it's a tough season for Joe Burrow. But let's let's not focus so much on what the Bengal what the Bengals are doing wrong. Let's give credit to the Steelers. Um, the fact that they are playing this level, leading their division with Russell Wilson when everybody else has written <laughs> right. Russell Wilson Comeback off. player of the year? Do you think it's a lock? And basically, the Steelers <clears throat> admit for that first week when they uh, signed Russell Wilson, he, the media was treating him like a laughing stock. You know, yeah. they, they kept replaying the let's ride, you know, Denver Nation, or, you know, Bronco Nation, let's ride, you know, and, and it was like, oh, let's laugh, laugh, laugh. And, you know. He was definitely a, an NFL punchline last year. And, and so then they get <clears throat> Russell Wilson in and now they have success. You know, I, I, my my take on the Pittsburgh Steelers is, look, that's the gold standard franchise, okay? And I say that, why? Do the Patriots have mo- more Super Bowls? Yes, one more. Okay, I get that. But the think about this. The Pittsburgh Steelers have had three coaches since 1969. <laughs> right. I, I want you <laughs> to put your head around that. Okay. Yeah. There are quarterbacks out there that have seen five head coaches in their <laughs> during their career. Yeah, you know? we did the head coaching lifetime for each of our teams a few weeks ago. Right. There was so many names in there, and that was only since 1981. Right. And so you know, you go from Chuck <clears throat> Knoll, Bill Cowher, <clears throat> Mike Tomlin, and it's just there's a blueprint there. There's there is a lot to be said about uh 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 
a team just being patient. Let's let's pick the right guy. We're not picking Jeez. a guy that's gonna to you know to 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 develop a quarterback. We're build. We're picking a guy that is gonna lead a franchise to multiple championships. I think we get so because these teams are like so jumpy to to get rid of a coach and establish a consistent culture. It's like Matt Eberflus has no business being Caleb Williams' head coach. Yeah, that's like the blind leading the blind. It, well, right, 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 right. It cannot so work how, out. How do game. you expect <clears throat> wins to translate? You know what I mean? It, rather than you put in the personnel, then then you see what, what works on your offense. You see what works on your defense. You start drafting the right to fit your 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 identity uh, as a franchise. And I, I, I want to give the Steelers hats off to the franchise because I don't think if we would have been discussing what the records were the at this point in the season with the Bengals and the Steelers, we would have reversed, you know, that those yeah. two records, right? Um yeah. Somehow the the Steelers pulled out a halfway decent season last year and they were a complete mess. Uh quick show note Sunday night football Tony Dungy, Jack Collinsworth, and Ronnie Harrison are still outside reporting. Tony Dungy's eyes are completely red now. They're reading tweets. They're reading tweets now. Can we get these guys inside? What's the point of this? They've been outside for 49 minutes, and the game has ended. I don't know what's going on with Sunday Night Football. Meanwhile, Collinsworth and Tariqa are probably already in a hotel room tucked away. Right. (laughs) Unbelievable. Here's a Tomlin stat that I think would blow anybody away. Tomlin, 18 seasons with the Steelers. No losing records. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, what does that tell you? You know what I mean? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You Hall of Fame just for that alone. All right, we'll take a break, and we're going to do the rest of the games. Love it. Okay, pause. All right, give me a second. Okay, coming back, a couple more early games. <clears throat> Seattle at the New York Jets. Nothing to talk about here other than I thought Rodgers got benched. He may be benched. He, uh, no, I thought he was going to be benched for this game. He played. Yeah, right. And now, and apparently it's still some controversy if he's going to be starting moving forward, you know, maybe to avoid paying him out, you know, for any injuries that I'm sure his agent set up for him. You yeah. Have, if you know he's not coming back next year, you know, let him walk you know he did the classic um they had a shot at the end of it threw up a pass that really had no chance but then this is what perplexed me he threw this kind of swing out pass and then he starts throwing blocks (laughs) i was like who's there what aaron Rodgers is this now you're blocking and then then he was talking shit after his block (laughs) he's completely uninteresting to me at this point i i i i I think he may be done i don't he might be he really I don't, might be. I, I don't see it. I, I think he's content with what he's done in his career. And he, you know, he's he's a Super Bowl champion, a yeah. multi multi MVP award winner. Um, you know, is going to go down as one of the top ten quarterbacks of all time. Um, yeah, it's just it's there's nothing interesting about him anymore. I mean, when you're not when you're not winning, there's nothing interesting about you. That's that's so, the lead. That's I haven't the lead seen anything then. good about this season at all. For the Jets. Seattle, this is their third straight win. We talked about them. They're the NFC West favorites. Houston, Jacksonville. Nothing interesting here unless except, Houston would have lost. Except the big, the big hit on Trevor oh, Lawrence. Oh, yeah. Trevor Lawrence got <laughs> got, as they used to say in the early in the late 90s, got jacked up. Yep. That was ugly. Uh if Houston would have lost this game, we would have had something to talk about. But Houston squeaks it out. Good for them. They're still on track. Then we got Tennessee, Washington. Tennessee puts up 42, 42 on Tennessee. That was sort of a sort of a wipe your hands like we won the game we should win. Moving on. I didn't find anything interesting about that game either. And then we go to the last late game, which was the big one. Philly at Baltimore. A battle of the two MVP running back candidates. Justin Tucker, who we used to call automatic, missed three field goals in this game. Bad, bad week for kickers in general. Tucker missed field goals. Raiders kicker missed field goals. Uh, 49ers uh, kicker missed field goals. Not a good week for field goal kickers. Uh, Barkley, although didn't really have a good game, got hot. 
in the last quarter was 730 left, ended up with 107 yards. Derrick Henry, okay, 82 yards. Philly, NFC. That brings us to Detroit, Philly. Who's our other NFC team? I I don't I don't think there's any outside. Minnesota. Philly, Detroit, Minnesota. I Rank them. Top still a, three. I still think there's a good gap between Philly and Detroit with everybody else. All right, well, let's go one, two, three. Detroit number one. Okay, Detroit number one. And in the conversation number, uh, not, no, Detroit is a definitive number one, but not far behind is Philadelphia. Then Minnesota? Then Minnesota. Hmm. What puts Philly over Minnesota to you? Is it Barkley? Is it no, the push absolutely. push? Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and at the end, uh, this is Sam Darnold's breakout year, but let's see how, let's see if he can continue, you know, to lead the team. You know, we don't, we've never seen him uh, playing meaningful football in December, January. Right. So, I mean, yeah. let's, let's just wait and see, um, you know, can, can, can Jordan love get over the hump? I think right after that, now we're talking, you know, Packers, we're talking commanders, um, you know, and then, and then maybe then uh, you pick them from the rest of it, you know? Yeah. Um, that's in a it. division where, say, like a, a Minnesota is not going to win the division and they have to go on the road for, say, a wild card or something like that, I'd be nervous. Say Sam Darnold has to go to Green Bay or something like that, I would be I would be nervous. Be like, shoot, I don't know if they can go on the road and win a tough game like that. So even though Minnesota's playing awesome, gosh, like Philly and Minnesota are right there for me. I don't know if they can make a run. I don't know if either of these teams can really make a run. Because I just don't know if I can comp- com- completely trust them. Not like Detroit that has proven themselves a little bit more than those two. What what about Baltimore and, and like their kicker can't make field goals anymore? They're tough kicks, but he just is missing. And look at the score. They would have tied the game or won it. He, you know, he's got a case of the the um uh, Tin Cup Shanks. What has he I got? Think. The Shanks? The Yips? He got the Shanks. Got the, got the Shanks. He's <laughs> he got needs uh he needs Cheech Marin. Yep. So wow, tough, tough. What a what a day it's of hard football. to watch because he has established himself as you know arguably one of the greatest kickers of all time, if not the greatest kicker of all time, as far as you know just ability and difficulty of kicks and consistency of kicks. Yeah, and then uh, they show his eyeballs after every miss, and he just looks like he's so rattled. Yeah, <laughs> looks like he's scared, like he saw a ghost or something. Uh, but you don't, you don't lose faith in him. You know, you got to believe that. Look, uh, uh, John Harbaugh's been doing this a long time, has won a Super Bowl. So let's just let's you know, let's just let him see what how they how they work with him. Yeah, I guess you have to keep faith in him. Maybe you don't trot him out for fifty five yarders anymore, and you say like, we're just going to go but for it. But let's be real, we got to. We don't have a long time to fix this between now and when we're playing the Chiefs, you know, the Bills. No, no they got to keep the them. Yeah. I'm just saying I think we're going to see a little bit more go for it on fourth downs from the 45 instead of bring him out there. He can make the long kick. Right. And same with the Chiefs. The Chiefs missed a, missed a couple of kicks on Friday too. Yeah. Rough week for kickers. What a week for football though. Man, we played football. We ran 5K. Your son is apparently half uh, Haitian because he can run at an extraordinary distance. Yep. (laughs) Unbelievable. Well, don't worry. We're still going to do the awards. First award. We do them every week. Most memorable moment. I was watching Philly Baltimore. And it's sort of ending. We're like, all right, Philly's got it. Oh, guess what? Tampa Bay Carolina is going into overtime. Switch it, right. and I get to watch two awesome drives. That was my most memorable moment. End of a fun game, Philly Baltimore, right into overtime football. Memorable moment for me. I loved it. Great programming. Just flip it. Luckily, got the Sunday ticket, flip it, and I got a second little bonus game going on there. Got to see Bryce Young. Absolutely. That was nice to see Bryce Young actually with a smile on his face on the football field. Yeah, really. Even in a loss, I feel like Carolina Panthers are – digging something out of out of the season uh what do you got most memorable moment i'll even let you extend it to any moment during the week as well can i i'm gonna extend it well obviously i'm not gonna forget the the, the fear i had playing against your brother on the uh, uh 
the backyard. <laughs> but my most memorable moment from this year for me personally, I'm not saying in a historical NFL sense, but my most memorable moment is when I said for 2024, football is officially over for the 49ers. Oh, wow. Somehow in a weird way, you called your own team's demise. Yeah. I think you did it like in week four or something of all things. Yeah, that was bad. Rough Jeez. Year. Memorable moment. Dark. Next award, the Cringeworthy Award. Two nominees for me. I got the running back Hubbard of Carolina. Kept being, kept getting a close, tight shot of him <laughs> as Tampa Bay kept driving for the win. That was rough to watch a sad, sad player on the sideline. Very cringeworthy. And second nominee because I got to listen to this game. Al Michaels and Kurt Herbstreit called the Black Friday game. Oh my God, those two are bad together. We yep. we have given Brady so much shit this year. Al Michaels and Herb Street have gotten away with some horrible, Let's... horrible interactions. So I got all of Al Michaels and Herb Street's attempts at we, a conversation. We've we've on Friday. Uh, as as far as the the cringeworthy. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say the, the 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 cringiest. Oh man, I I had it. Um, uh, but I thought the the cringiest. Obviously, the 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 given is the Eberflus. Uh, um, oh thing. yeah, yeah. Um, but but I'm gonna say uh, the cringiest was watching all the all the football fights uh, in college football and in the world. <laughs> oh yeah, today. those were some good seemed, fights. Yeah, it yeah. just seemed like people were a little just a little not very festive for Thanksgiving weekend. You know, I don't yeah. know what it was this weekend. The rivalry games seem to bring it out, and also you can't bring props out onto a field that have pointy ends on them. Because oh. players are going to do bad things with them and try and stab them into a poison player's fields. They're going to use them as, it's just, just can we eliminate props? Like, don't give these players a reason to act badly. Yep. And by I the agree. way, you can't stab a, a, a field that's made of turf anyway. I think right. we would have figured this out by now. And it, it didn't, it seemed like a toy pitchfork. <laughs> oh, the Arizona one? That was bad. Yeah. Someone's going to get a punctured lung. I mean, I guess you don't want a pit, a real looking pitchfork on the field, but mm. that that looked like a Toys R Us pitchfork. <laughs> We're not that far away from it. Uh, one more note on my Al Michaels, Kurt Herbstreit hatred. There's a part they're calling the game, and Amazon Prime runs a promo for the Madden video game football documentary. Did you watch <laughs> it? No, I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna watch it. And Patrick, please. Kirk Herb, Herbstreet says to Al Michaels, oh, that game revolutionized things. We still talk about it today. Have you ever played the game, Al Michaels? And Al Michaels goes, I was in the game. And Herbstreet goes, right. But did you ever play it? And Al Michael goes, come on. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, Al Michaels? Are you going to leave your broadcast partner hanging like that? And then Herbstreet says, I wonder if John Madden ever played the game. And Al Michaels leaves him hanging again. He's like, God, I mean, like, he's a legend. He's a legend. Like, they can't talk to each other. They oh. can't have a normal conversation, these two. I bet as soon as the game over is over, Al Michaels is just like, bring my, bring my limo around. I got a flight to catch. They're so bad together. They're so bad. Yep. I, don't, I can't, just can't believe how they can't even talk to each other. Cringeworthy. Uh, next award. This will get me in a better mood. Best Innovation Award. I got one. This commercial came up during Sunday Night Football. Pizza Hut's Triple Treat Box. Did you see that commercial? Yes. <laughs> Where apparently it's a box of shelves and you can put breadsticks and a pizza and wings in it. I almost bought one right then and there. You, I wish, you should have ordered one, Pat. I'm going to get one. I am going to get the Pizza Hut's Triple Treat Box and report back. God, that looked good. You know I'm a sucker. For stuff like that. That's my best innovation. Pizza in a box. Loved it. What do you got? Do you have a best innovation for the week? We already kind of touched upon it, but I did kind of like that uh that the 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 building of the new Buffalo Stadium is is, is oh good innovation, yeah. A, a a is modeled after a um you know the 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 stadium. I guess they said Tottenham Hotspur, obviously from the English, you know, premiership, which is oh, the, yeah. N the NFL of England, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and so what they're trying to do is so that the, the, uh, what was it? We talked, did we talk about this, that the, the roof is going to be where, yeah. 
the, it's going to cover crowd. like 60% yeah. of the crowd. Yeah. So I think that's, yeah. that's, that's my favorite innovation right now. I'll give it to you, Europe. You do stadiums right. They do. I, I mean, well, because they, we can they, borrow they, something from our European neighbors. Oh, well, you know, historic, historic games. You know what I mean? They, they, you know, football, their football is a big deal over there. Sure. We found your uh, way of government uh, offensive Impressive. enough to start a revolution and leave you. Right. And I want to pay attention, but sure, we can still find common ground on on stadiums. Sure, exactly. we don't accept the metric system, but stadiums, okay. Next award, the soundtrack award. I actually got one. This goes for the Raiders, the now San Francisco 49ers, the Panthers, the Jets. Soundtrack award is burning down the house by the talking heads. Burn it all down. We don't need this anymore. Burn it down. I, I, I'm gonna second yours, Pat. I don't want to sound like a uh, sound like I'm just, you know, uh, copying. Al Michaels. Going, it's 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 bad, man. It, it it's bad. Burn it down. It's okay to burn it down. Jeez. Next award, the hot take award. You threw thrown out a lot of hot takes during Thanksgiving. Like I think, like you think that's like your thing. You're like, hey Pat, hot take, and then you just throw hot takes at me. You said Jerry Jones was gonna lose all his games for like all next year. Like your hot takes were getting too hot. Maybe you were overserved at Thanksgiving. I don't know, but you were throwing a lot of hot takes on Thanksgiving. My hot take is I, I think my hot take right now. Um well, I, I gave you one, didn't I? For Thanksgiving that I You said gave me Christmas. several. You told me Jerry Jones was gonna tank all of next season. Uh, oh, to get Arch Manning. I, I Yeah, I still, that's when I thought you were overserved. Yeah, I thought, I thought, I think, I still, and I, and, and I think she, um, this may be Coach Kyle Shanahan's last year in San Francisco. Oh, wow. Double header of hot takes. Uh, my hot take is call me crazy. I think this is Mike Tomlin's year. I think he's just going to find a way to win all these games. Hot take. He's never had a losing season. He's been there 18 years. He's dressing like, like he's a mob boss on the sidelines now, too. All black, black hoodie. Or black uh, ski cap, black shirt, aviator sunglasses. Woo, hot take. It's Mike Tomlin's year. The I, I, Sunday. I, I love that. I love that. You like it. The Sunday double feature. All right. We just watched a pretty good snow game. Christmas is coming up. You know what my Sunday double feature is? What's Die that? Hard 2. Die Ooh. Harder. I like that. John McClane in the snow, trying to get home for Christmas. Flip, throw it on. That's a very underrated sequel, Die Hard 2. I, I, like, I like where your head's at, man. That's a, that's a very good one. Yeah. I want Die Hard 2. What do you got? I, I'm going to go with Fatal Attraction, an old 80s movie. Oh, geez. Why? Uh, okay. So um, about that. Uh, and it would have also been, it also qualified as a cringeworthy moment for me. And we're going to go also to a college game. Um, Travis Hunter... From Colorado, the star receiver, uh, you know, projected to be a top pick in, in next year's draft, uh, a potential superstar on both sides of the ball. He is trying to celebrate the win, and it looks like his girlfriend is giving him shit on the football field. After... Oh, yeah. you Is this the thing you sent me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, wow. Then, like, he, he posts a picture of her with her tattoo. <clears throat> he needs to get away. Wow. <laughs> wow. That could, that could double. Wait. So, oh, you went fatal attraction. Okay. Yeah. That, I get the connection now. Wow. Wow. She will not be ignored. Omar. Hey, how about the fatal? You just got me thinking. Michael Douglas had quite the run from the late eighties to early nineties as being like a male lead that like he was still getting chicks who were like 32 years old, fatal attraction, basic instinct, disclosure is michael douglas attractive <laughs> is he a is he a man that any of these women would throw themselves at this this might be a piece of hollywood uh really put posting up a male actor that really isn't that attractive yet he's getting all these hot chicks michael douglas yeah. what a run from late 80s to the 90s i mean let's just say that the, the guy claims to have gotten uh throat cancer through oral sex I, you know, oh that's yeah that's right and he threw that out there too Wow, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. Gordon Gordon Gecko himself. Oh, I forgot about uh, Wall Street. Gordon Gecko. That's right. Because it's wreckable. The announcer award. <laughs> crowd favorite. I got 
Chris Collinsworth talking about a snow game he played in Denver at the beginning of the broadcast. Oh, Mike, the snow was getting in my eyes, Mike, and uh, it was all over your hands, Mike. Like I, I thought Chris Collinsworth could have went another five minutes if Tariko let him. Talking about snow and then talking about how it was like fun, asking, <laughs> asking <laughs> which, where, which lake the snow was coming from. Halfway through the broadcast, is that Lake Erie, Mike? The snow, you got warm air and 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 uh and uh, hot air from the from cold air from the. You're gonna get snow, Mike. Uh, uh, Chris Collinsworth going on a little snow rat announcer. Yeah, Chris work. Collinsworth after uh, after that play from um uh, uh Josh Allen the 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 Amari mm-hmm. Cooper lateral to Josh Allen and the the athletic <laughs> that was that was Hall of Famer. Oh, but then, but then Chris Collinsworth says, this is what happens when you get engaged. And I said, oh, right. What are you talking about? You get a little <laughs> happiness in your life, Mike. Come on, Mike, get engaged. You'll love let's, it. Let's, let's, let's look, let's look for the old, I, I want to say I, there was a rookie or maybe he was a, a, a receiver at Florida. When he was young, he was talking about, he was still dating high school girls. Yeah. He likes them dumb. I like <laughs> them dumb, dumb, Mike. Well, that maybe that's why he was saying it. Cause he's like, he wasn't happy then. <laughs> That was a good one. That was a good one. Talking about Josh Allen getting engaged. Look at you. You're so anti-relationship, Omar. You talk about Travis Henry, Chris Collinsworth. <laughs> that was a great, another great game for Chris Collins. He might be undefeated this year at Sunday night games. Perry, we need to get him back with Al Michaels just so he can give him a hard time. Come on, my, come on, Al. You know, I, I work with the best of them, Al. You're really half-assing it with Herb Street. Next award, best quote. I did a little digging, but this one caught my ear and I had to include it. Maria Taylor is doing the football highlights. They're doing the Cincinnati-Pittsburgh game. And Maria Taylor throws out this quote. Joe Burrow's playing some of his best football. Maria Taylor, that won three games. Can we think of a different wording for this? I thought that was a great quote that I'm not sure what the hell she was talking about. You can't be playing your best football and have a losing record. You just can't. I, I agree. I agree. Sorry, Maria Taylor. I like you, but that quote was completely inaccurate. That's my best quote. What do you got for the week? Well, that was that quote. That that that, that was my that was not my best quote, but that was I did not like that. That's what engaged. That that's what will happen when you get engaged. <laughs> I didn't like that. Get a little happiness in your life, Mike. <laughs> All right, that leads us to the best play call slash coaches award. I went with. Of course, we can include Eberflus, which he might have been included all year long in this but i went with how about the bills head coach at the end of the snow game is almost completely covered in snow on the brim of his hat on his like he's wearing just a sweatshirt the snow is sticking to it it's melting through it and yet he's looking like he's having the best time of his life so i give the coach's award to the bills head coach being covered in snow and still having fun give it to him what do you got got a blessed best play caller coach's award you know, I'm, I'm gonna say the the the, the best a uh, uh, play caller um, coaching award. That's that's a great question. Um, I I loved I loved what Dave Canales did in a losing effort uh, with the Carolina Panthers. Had him in the game mm. against the Buccaneers, um, and and I saw some hope. I saw a glimmer of hope in Carolina this evening. Oh, like a gleam, like a Marty Schottenheimer gleam. Yes, sir. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, we should have a future award, and maybe you could award it to them. Yeah, Carolina's all of a sudden become the fun team. I like that. Right. Last award. Who won the week? I got two nominees. Mike Tomlin. And how about... Absolutely. Their other nominee. How about the Minnesota Viking fans? I was going to tell you, Val, you, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say Tomlin and to, a, to an extent the Vikings. Well, um, I just want the fans because how great it is is it that your team is winning... They win a game in December and it's super cold out and you have an indoor stadium. You get to go inside Minnesota. It's like, it's like they're being, it's like they're being rewarded for many years of, of, of freezing at the old old metropolitan stadium. Yeah. You get to see your team be good inside. I think the fans might've won the week too for Minnesota. I would have. And now looking back on it, I'm sure there's some fans that are very thankful during the, during the Minnesota's time in the, uh, in the Metrodome. (laughs) That that roof didn't cave in when all that snow was on top of it the way it did a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, totally. Totally. You get to enjoy indoors. It's very cold in that part of the country right now. So 
What a time to go inside. Excellent. So, what do you what do you uh, agree? Mike Tomlin won the week. Who do you give the award to? Uh, my, Your son oh, for my, running my, a sub seven minute mile. Oh, I, th- I think I, I think I, I think so. <laughs> Apparently, doesn't um, care. I, I, I want to say your brother Andrew Ramirez won the week because, <laughs> because he, he basically um, added another another highlight reel to you know to the life to the life story. You know. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. He and I were doing a little um, a little reminiscing of our um, middle school flag football days. We were comparing our uh, our team's winning seasons. Like, did you? What year did you guys win? The championship and it was like oh what, what did you win it your eighth grade year we're doing a little um memory lane stuff about our football our football uh highlights throughout the years nice he might have won the week you give it to him huh yeah absolutely <laughs> all right those are the games for week 13 in the league however you know it you love it there's one game left and it's monday night we have the Cleveland Winstons, I mean the Cleveland Browns, going to the Denver Broncos. Omar, I, I think I have to watch this game. I, I, I think it's going to be a good game. I, 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 am, interested to see, I am interested to see what uh, uh, Bo Nix does and, and, you know, uh, uh, in a game that they should win at home again, and they're not out of it, um, the playoff nope, race. Not. So let's just see, you know, what? let's see the, 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 the strides that that um, uh, uh, Sean Payton has made with Bo Nix. I'm going to go Denver 23, Cleveland 9. Wow. That sounds like a Cleveland score. It really does. God, everything you said makes sense. However, I don't like going against Winston. He loves the snow. Last week, he loved snow. He's back. So... Fine, you can crucify me come Tuesday morning. I'm going to go the Cleveland Winstons 24, Denver Broncos 17. Oh, you're wow, interesting. I love Winston. He's All our right, guy. Man. He's fun. You know, it's it's Denver. We don't know what kind of weather we're going to get. It's going to be fun. Like let's let's keep this what is it? 9 days of football. <laughs> let's cap it off Monday night. Let's have a good time. Well, week 13, I gave up on my team. They played hard. Omar gave up on his team. We don't know what's going on. That's the NFL. Everybody, that was the Sunday Night Talk. That was the Thanksgiving edition of the Sunday Night Talk. Me and Omar actually spent it together, and we didn't end up killing each other. Omar, for week 13, for me, Patrick Ramirez. See everybody next week. Get some sleep, everybody. Get ready for the holidays. Good Good night, night, everyone.